If there is a creator okay. who created all of this, heaven, earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, the human soul, the human body, uh -huh. animals, plants, all of this magnificence that we see around us. If God is real and if he's one God, would he a lot not of, a lot of be powerful enough? We're starting off, I just want to point out, we're starting this with a lot of fucking ifs. We got to assume like... If there is a God, if he's one God, if he created all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And like, there's a lot of ifs going on here. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, for the sake of argument, I'm going to accept all of your ifs and then see what, what's the premise. What are we drawing? To reveal himself to us throughout the ages, through prophets, okay. through his own creation. And would he not be powerful enough to give us his word through scripture? Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, he would. Uh, he would also be powerful enough to not fuck with us with some weird test. Yeah, God should be powerful enough to just be self-evident. There's not any genuine debate over whether the sun and the moon and the stars and the planet exist. There's some crazies out there that like the moon is a hologram or whatever the fuck. But for the most part, people know those things are real. God, there's debate about because we've never seen him. He's never made himself apparent to us. He's never been measurable. He's never been testable. If there is a God that created the universe and he has a special interest he takes in us specifically, and he wants us to behave in certain ways, wouldn't he make that clear to us in a way that's like undeniably like, hey, I am God. I am your creator. I created the universe. This is what I want from you. He would do that, right? <laughs> he wouldn't just be like, you know, uh, uh, oh, a thousand years ago, he told some guy where no one else was around. And then there's this book full of contradictions that uh, he, he left us that tells us what we're supposed to do. And everything in the book is like fucked up and weird. And you read the book and it's like, women should marry their rapists. And it's like, what? Here's how you should treat your slaves. What? There have been things that have happened. The life <clears throat> and ministry of Jesus fulfilled many old testament prophecies he said he would be born in bethlehem that he oh would be wow guys you get that the book predicts what will happen later in the book well if that's the standard of evidence then harry potter is a fucking goddamn prophecy because it says in harry potter well one will rise up and you know whatever the fuck the prophecy said and then later on in the series, the prophecy is fulfilled. Oh my God, wow. When you're writing a, a, a fictional narrative specifically to fulfill prophecies made in a different part of the same fictional narrative, it's pretty easy to fucking fulfill the prophecies that way. That's the dumbest, worst evidence I've ever heard in my life. And Jesus himself said that this gospel would go to all the world. Now, when he said that, he had not even left Israel. Guess what? Every fucking crazy motherfucker out there that starts a cult has delusions of grandeur wherein their word is going to spread across the globe. Every once in a while, they're right. It's just law of averages kind of shit because every fucking cultist says that. Every cultist says that one day their gospel will fucking be the definitive text of the world. Every other religion that has a, a religious leader that it follows has said that. Big, small, medium, large, whatever the fuck. They've all said it. They've all said one day our religion will be the globally dominant religion. One thing. Now, the second thing is, if you're not a Christian, you say, well, I believe in God, but I'm not a Christian. If Jesus really did rise from the dead, does that not mean that he is who he said he was? Not really. Um, this is an old Christopher Hitchens argument, but if you look at the Bible, uh, people coming back from the dead was not all that super uncommon. So even if you're looking at the evidence contained within the Bible uh, and just taking the Bible literally at face value like this, okay, even then Jesus's claims of being the son of God, not really warranted like by the, uh, the evidence. The fact that he came back from the dead, Lazarus came back from the dead, several other biblical characters came back from the dead. So uh, that doesn't prove he's the son of God. His miracles don't prove he's the son of God. Plenty of other characters in the Bible do magic and miracles. And I mean, to think about the downgrade, by the way, from God to Jesus, God created the entire universe. Jesus turned water into wine and you know fed a bunch of people with insufficient food jesus's shit comes across as parlor tricks in comparison to the attributes given 
to the all-powerful God. He said he's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the bread that came down from heaven. Many other things Jesus said. He's the shepherd of the sheep. Okay, so Jesus said some pretty sounding words. Big fucking deal. Who the fuck can't do? I mean, like, I guess not everyone is is uh, can make a pretty speech, but making a pretty speech does not mean you're God. If Jesus really did rise from the dead, so let's go back. If God is real... Once again, relying on so many ifs here, too. If, 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 if. Is he not? <clears throat> if he can create the world by his spoken word, if he can create humanity, if he can take and form from the dust of the ground the human being, Adam, and breathe into him the breath of life, can he not wrap himself in human flesh? Um, yeah. I mean, look, if... <laughs> If there was a being called God, and if he created a man called Adam in a Garden of Eden once upon a time, and if he created the entire universe just through speech alone, then yes, he could easily, I would assume, turn himself into a human being and live a life as, as said human being. But that's a bunch of ifs stacked upon other ifs. <laughs> you know, so I, where I would say to you is... Uh, there is no God. The universe was not created by God. There was no Adam. If there was an Adam, he wasn't created by God. Uh, there was no Garden of Eden. And if there was a Garden of Eden, it wasn't created by God because there is no God. So yeah, all the ifs just like kind of fall apart when you do that, right? This guy's argument thus far is, hey guys, if every if we just accept everything in the Bible is true, then you know Jesus is God, and you know He's the Savior and stuff. Well, yeah, that's what the book explicitly says. The problem is we don't accept that book is true because it's not. First of all, it couldn't be because it contradicts itself all the fuck over the place. Check out Skeptics Annotated Bible for more information on that. Second of all, it's full of like cruelty and inhumanity. Third of all, it's full of like scientific inaccuracy. I mean. <laughs> This is all just goofy. The Bible says he was eternal. He was with the Father from the beginning. He was the Word made flesh. Now, I'm saying all of this for people who are atheists and who are not Christians. Well, you're doing a pretty shitty job with the atheists because, like, someone comes to you and says, like, I don't believe in the Bible. And then you're like, well, what if the Bible is true? If that were the case, then the Bible would be true. It's like, well, yeah, I guess, but it's not, so... Huh? Now, this is not the gospel. I'm going to get to the gospel. I'm just stirring you up to think. Now, obviously, the gospel, which I'm going <laughs> to get to, that's going to cut You're stirring me up to think, huh? All right. Well, you don't want to know what I'm thinking because I'm not. it's not very flattering. If God is real, is he not powerful enough to give us the truth? Now, I know there's many religions. Yeah. If God is real, he's powerful enough to give us the truth. But he's not. So... Once again, like, is this all there is? There's Christianity. There's mm -hmm. Judaism. Yep. You know, there's Sikhism. There's well, atheism, which people would say is not a religion, but it is a set of beliefs. I mean, atheism is really not a set of beliefs. Atheism is pretty much just the rejection of the God hypothesis. The truth is they can't all be true. And the distinguishing factor between Christianity and every other religion World religion is this. Okay. Jesus is the only one who claimed to die for your sins. And he. Pretty sure, first of all, that's not true. Second of all, so what? <laughs> Even if it was, like, because the gimmick is slightly different, that makes it the true religion. First of all, the, the idea of Jesus dying for our sins doesn't even make sense to begin with. I mean, the sin is supposedly the original sin committed by Adam and Eve, which is eating the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So God puts two people in a garden, creates a rule that they have no ability to know they should follow because they don't have a knowledge of good and evil. And then they break the rule. He condemns them for, as sinful makes them wander the earth in misery for a few generations, eventually starts to feel kind of bad for him, and then sends himself down in human form, and then when we murder him, that somehow, okay, we're absolved. Like, it, does, it literally narratively doesn't make sense. The act that condemns us is that we ate some fruit that gave us knowledge, 
And the act that saves us is we literally murder God on a cross. Like the, the narrative is garbage. It's not even a good story. So to say that that's what sets Christianity apart, I mean, I agree it sets it apart in stupidity, but it doesn't set it apart as like, ooh, this is why this one's the truth because it literally doesn't make sense. I mean, like, wouldn't the narrative make more sense if it was exactly reversed? Like our sin was we killed God and our redemption was we ate the fruit and learned the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't that narrative make infinitely more sense than what's actually presented in the fucking Bible? When they saw the resurrected Savior and the instantly they claimed we saw him risen, over 500 people claimed to see the risen Savior. Paul the Apostle... Let me ask you this, buddy. Let's say 500 people saw some sort of Muslim miracle, right? Would you all of a sudden be like, oh, I guess Islam is the true religion? No. You would, you would fucking have an excuse as to why you didn't believe it. Because guess what? One person can lie, two people can lie, 500 people can lie, 1,000 people can lie, 10,000 people can lie. The amount of people repeating a lie doesn't make it all of a sudden have the fucking feel of the truth, you know? As much as we want to believe that uh, more people telling us the story makes the story truer, it just doesn't who was formerly a persecutor of Christians, who killed Christians, who hated Christians, met the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus, and he became the great Apostle Paul. So your attempt to convert me, an atheist, to Christianity is just to tell me a bunch of stories from the Bible, a book you already know I don't believe in, and then you're just like, but look what's in the book. It's like, yeah, I reject the book. Okay, so even let's say I take the story of Saul slash Paul at face value, right? How else could it be explained that Paul, this great, I'm sorry, Saul at the time, this great prosecutor of Christians, persecutor of Christians, makes this uh, epic conversion? Maybe he simply saw the writing on the fucking wall. Maybe he just saw like, hey, this is a good fucking grift. I need to stop being against these motherfuckers and start being their friend. I need to start being their buddy. <laughs> and he just decides, like, if I fucking do that, I could be high up in this damn religion. Here's what the Bible says. Psalms 115 verse 3. But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. God is a sovereign God. And what I'm trying to get you to see is that I believe wholeheartedly there is one God, three persons, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is one God and that he is sovereign and that if he can create this world, then he is sure powerful enough to give us the truth. There's not been a single atheist or non-believer or believer or anybody that's ever said, the reason I doubt God is because I don't think he's powerful enough to give us the truth. <laughs> like, that's not an argument. I don't know what you keep coming back to this for. I don't know what you're fucking trying to refute with this. Historically, that Jesus was a miracle worker, that people believed he worked miracles, that they flocked to him. Okay. Maybe people believed he worked miracles, but people believe that about hucksters to this day. So what's to say Jesus wasn't just some like religious hustler like we know exists that just happened to fucking, you know, hit at the right moment for his, uh, you know, uh, teachings, quote unquote, to, you know, uh, pa get passed down through the generations. Like he didn't just win the little like religion lottery, you know, he, he happened to come out just around the time people were looking for a new uh, faith and wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. But just because a guy comes along that fucking you claim can perform miracles. I mean, like think about the lame shit people believe to this day. Like to this day, there are preachers and pastors that go on TV, lay their hands on somebody and go, waka, laka, laka. And then that person's like, oh, I can walk. Oh, I can hear. Oh, my cancer's gone. And it's like, oh, lo and behold, a miracle has been performed, right? And we know those people are full of shit. At least I know they're full of shit. Maybe you fucking believe in them. I'm not sure. But, um, <laughs> you know, if it happens now, when people are a little bit more savvy than they were 2,000 years ago, imagine the kind of bullshit you get away with 2,000 years ago. 
before there was even modern medicine with this shit. Okay, and now this message of the gospel has went all over the world and you are listening to me today. You cannot escape the person of Jesus Christ. You're gonna have to deal with him one way or the other. What do you believe about Jesus? All right, here's what I believe about Jesus. I believe there's a pretty fucking solid chance that Jesus did not exist. I believe that if Jesus did exist, he was probably a religious huckster of some kind. Maybe he was like a very fiery preacher who uh, was able to captivate um, an audience. And uh, I believe that he may or may not have uh, been executed for heresy or whatever the fuck. And after he died, people continued to believe in him. And the whole thing has gotten right the fuck out of hand uh, until we're at where we're at today. Uh, but I also think it's very possible that there was no fucking Jesus and the whole story was just made up because it's like a narrative. I mean, like, and you think about like some of the teachings of Christianity, a lot of them are exactly what you'd want as the Romans trying to, uh, you know, persecute um, people, you know, because it's, it's all about, uh, uh, you know, well, you're not going to get any advantage over your, the ruling class in this life. But, you know, once you go to heaven, you know, they're going to be burning in a pit of flames and you're going to go to a magical place, you know. But in this life, you just got to eat the shit sandwich. That's what this life is all about. But the next life, everything's going to be fucking awesome. As soon as you're dead, your life is going to improve. That's the basic message of Christianity. And uh, what despot wouldn't love a religion that tells the people that they're oppressing that, you know, just accept it in the here and now because later on, when everyone's dead and gone. That's when you're gonna get your edge, right? He came into world history and he changed the fabric of history. For yeah, so so of any number of other fucking historical figures. You don't think Muhammad did that? Buddha did that. Every religious leader has done that. As have a bunch of other non-religious leaders. What about Nelson Mandela? You know? I mean, like, there's plenty of fucking figures throughout history that changed the course of human events. You know, so I don't know what this this idea is that Jesus is some kind of like, oh, wow, he stands apart from the rest. He doesn't really. He's a big one, but he's far from the only one. Why? Because he was not just a man. He was the eternal. So uh, no, nothing you've said about Jesus makes him more than just a man. Even the stuff about him being resurrected, because once again, other people in the Bible were resurrected. Even the stuff about him performing miracles, because once again, other people in the Bible perform miracles. Hell, even when Moses went to the Pharaoh and, uh, you know, tried to, to do a little um, miraculous God-bothering fucking act to scare the Pharaoh into letting his people go, uh, the Pharaoh's court magicians were able to replicate Moses' miracles. They were able to also turn a staff into a serpent or whatever the fuck, you know, with no help from God, apparently. The Bible specifically says there are witches and sorcerers in the world. So in the context of the Bible, magic exists. You don't need to be the son of God to do magic. The other thing about even taking the Bible literally leads one to believe that Jesus is the son of God. He said he was, and he performed some miracles, but he could be just as easily be a lying sorcerer by the Bible's own standards, right? And think about the gospel. If you don't believe it, all I'm asking you to do is listen to all me. All right, I'm listening. Does it not make sense okay. that if God is good... Oof, that's an even bigger if than God existing, to be honest with you. God is so powerful, he needs a bunch of impotent, mushmouth grifting toadies to back him up on a constant basis. Yeah, that's, that's a, you know, typical feature of divinity. Um, no, but... Uh, if God exists, I mean, look, I would be more likely to accept the idea that God exists than the idea that God is good. That's where I'm at on that one. Um, because the idea that some sort of deity out there in the universe exists, it's not that far-fetched. I mean, I don't see any compelling reason to believe it, but I wouldn't be shocked by it if it turned out to be true. But to say that the God specifically laid out in Christianity is true, to me, that's a completely failed hypothesis. To me, that's already been disproven. The book itself disproves it with its numerous contradictions and inaccuracies. But uh, And also just like the self-refuting nature of the attributes of the God of the Bible. But to believe that that God not only exists, but is the God of the Bible, and that somehow the God of the Bible is good, that's like several bridges too far. The God of the Bible is not good. The God of the Bible doesn't even claim to be good. The God of the Bible openly admits that he is jealous, petty, and vengeful.
These are not attributes of a good person. Then he also has to be righteous. Because if you have love in your heart, you can't put up with murder. You can't put up with someone raping or abusing someone. You would be angry. Yeah, now we're talking about love in your heart. Which, first of all, that's a pretty weird assumption also. Because I think that there have definitely been people who had love in their heart for one group of people and didn't give a fuck about another group of people. There have been plenty of people who are fine with rape and murder and exploitation and genocide and all kinds of horrible shit happening in their names somewhere else. But then they still love their family, you know? I mean, it's just like I can go eat a cheeseburger and be like, mmm, this cheeseburger is fucking delicious. And then I can go home and pet my dog and be like, oh, yeah, Salvador, you're such a sweet boy. And I know that, you know, <laughs> Salvador, who I love and would never fucking make a cheeseburger out of, is really not all that different than the cow I just fucking ate. But I'm still able to juggle both of those things because human, human beings are totally capable of double think, totally capable of embracing contradiction. So yeah, human beings are contradictory. What's not contradictory is truth. What's not contradictory is science. What is contradictory is human beings and our whims. What else is contradictory is the Bible because the Bible is a product of human beings and our contradictory nature and our whims. So yeah, the Bible does not to me have the ring of a book that is based in fact, it has a uh, the ring of a book that is based in flawed human conceptions of the world. You know, maybe there's some kind of truths in the Bible that are emotional truths, subjective truths, which is to say not really truths, but they resonate with human beings. That's clearly a thing. Clearly parts of the Bible resonate with human beings, or at least once did. I feel like its ability to do that has greatly diminished over time. And basically now it's just like some Klingons, but still. The Bible is not a book of, of truth. The Bible is a book of human contradiction, human desire, human anger, human malevolence, uh, and a very human God, a God of pettiness, vengefulness, and jealousy, which is, you know, these are attributes of human beings. They're not attributes of some, you know, enlightened divine being capable of creating, uh, you know, planets and stars and solar systems. Cows don't play fetch. Your conscience is clear. Thank God. Who I don't believe in. He will not let sin into heaven okay. because we would corrupt the glory of God. I mean, the Bible it says, itself says all human beings are sinful. The whole thing is you get forgiven for your sins by accepting Jesus, but he doesn't wash away your sins. <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess sometimes they use that language, but like clearly people who believe in Jesus still sin. So the idea that you're going to be have like this like sinful component of your being removed from you upon entry into heaven means it's not really you going to heaven in the first place. It's just some weird sin deprived version of you when really all human beings by the standards of the Bible are sinful. Eve, he created a perfect world with Adam and Eve, and he gave them a choice with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because- No, the tree of knowledge of good and evil means that until they eat that fruit, they don't know what good and evil are. It's basically like fucking, I mean like giving, like two beings have no fucking understanding of math and then <laughs> trying, you know, giving them like a math problem. You cannot give a, a kindergartner an algebraic equation and then say that they've like morally failed when they don't get the answer. Because God did not create robots, he created humans with free will, and he gives us a choice to receive him or to deny him. Okay? No, no that wasn't the choice he gave Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. There was no choice about to receive or deny God. The choice was, here you are in paradise, here I am God, demonstrating myself to exist, and I am telling you, do not eat this fruit. But since they had no concept of good and evil, they didn't know that it was evil to eat the fruit, which it really wasn't anyway. But, you know, like for the sake of argument, it's evil to eat the fruit. So they had, but they had no ability to understand that because they hadn't eaten the fucking fruit. The knowledge of good and evil was contained in the fruit. It wasn't contained in Adam and Eve. So that's not really a fair choice. It's not even a real choice. No, here's what I'm saying. If God is real... Obviously, I believe he is, and I'm, I, I, I know he is, okay? I'm no, you don't. You don't know he is. You believe he is, and you believe incorrectly. I'm speaking to you to think about this in your heart and be real. I'm not going to think about it in my heart because my heart pumps blood. It doesn't think. With it. If he's real, does it not make sense that he is good 
And if no, not really. I mean, if you look around this world that he's created and all of the misery and suffering that take that goes on here and all of the people who are lost and hopeless and just desperate for something to come save them and God just watches all that with his fucking, you know, and sits on his hands, then no, I don't think he's good. I think he's a piece of shit. If there is a God that, you know, takes any interest in human affairs and is like, and looks at what's going on now and finds it acceptable, then that God, in my view, is an evil, narcissistic, petty, jealous, vengeful shitbag, which most of those attributes he himself cops to. So if he definitely is not good, a good God. He has to deal with sin. If he was good, yeah, he would deal with sin by not allowing it to happen. He wouldn't allow fucking, you know, people to get raped, murdered, molested, tortured, abused, physically, psychologically. He wouldn't allow those things to happen. Jesus came into this world, the sinless, spotless son of God. He fulfilled the law of God because the Bible says if you've broken one, you've broken all. All of us are like filthy rags. Our righteousness, even our righteousness is like filthy rags before a holy God. I never understood this, this idea that Christians always put forth. They always try to tell us, like, out of one side of their mouths, they'll tell us we are created in God's image. We are, you know, d destined to be with God for eternity and that we are s worthy of being saved. I mean, they must believe we're worthy of being saved because look at how desperately this guy is trying to save us. But then on the other side of their mouths, we're worthless, disgusting wretches who are not worthy of being saved, but only through God can we be saved. This is, by the way, a tactic used by abusive partners in domestic situations to just destroy the self-esteem of your partner. I mean, this is what he's doing right now. He is trying to destroy your self-esteem so that you'll be more susceptible to his religious bullshit. So he tells you you're a wretch and he tells you you're a sinner and he tells you you're bad. And he tells you you're awful. It tells us that you're fucking, you're a dirty, disgusting rag. Even your best things about you are a dirty, disgusting rag. But you know what? God is willing to look past all that. And it's just like, it's a horrible thing to fucking do. It's manipulative. It's emotionally manipulative. It's fucking intellectually manipulative. It's intellectually dishonest. It's fucking pure sophistry. It's sickening. It's gross. In what world do you think a cynical, jaded motherfucker like me listens to this fucking gobbledygook and is like, whoa, the gospel is, the, is clearly the truth. You've not made one fucking argument to that effect. You've had a bunch of if statements that the, the ifs are extremely fucking dubious. Your faith in Jesus and God will freely give you eternal life and uh -huh. you will be born again. You will go from darkness to life. Now, here's why I'm saying if God is real, can he not do this? If he can create the world, the sun, the moon, and the stars, if he's really eternal, if he's really sovereign, can he not give us the truth in his word and preserve his word through the ages? Can he not wrap himself in human flesh? Can he not raise from the dead? Can yeah, if he was real, he could do all that. This is about as persuasive as you fucking sitting there holding a Harry Potter book in your hands and be like, if Harry Potter is not real, if, he, if he's real, can he not summon the fucking Patronus? Can he not transfigure, you know, items using his magic powers? It does. This is not persuasive, dude. It's a fucking book. I'm writing a book. You know that? I'm writing a book called Sexbot Uprising, okay? And you know what? The heroes in my book are capable of doing all kinds of cool shit. You know why? Because I made it up. I made it all right the fuck up, guy. <laughs> yeah, fictional characters can have all kinds of impressive attributes. They're fictional. Can he not make a way that we could be restored to him and appear as though we are righteous, uh -huh. not by our own works, but by the goodness of Jesus Christ? Can Harry Potter not say when Gaudium Leviosa and levitate objects? 
using only his magical wand and the powers that reside within. And that's what you have to face. And now I'm going to close with this. I believe there is one God. I believe Jesus is the son of God. He saved me from heroin. He saved me from sin. He saved me out of darkness. And you will stand before him on the day of judgment. And the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But Jesus Christ is Lord. And the scripture says in Romans. I love how in his mind this is like some really powerful stuff, you know? You can just tell by the way he's inflecting it, like, in his brain, this is like, whoa. He's changing hearts and minds right now. This is <laughs> this is changing the way people think, you know what I mean? Romans chapter 10, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you oh, will be saved. Thank you! Ugh. God bless me. Well, that sucked. Be a man.